Castle Valley and fame to its reputation as a haunted Victorian Gothic masterpiece. With many a witness testimonies to ghostly sightings and other phenomena, join me, Don Phillips, as we investigate the Winchester Mansion. We're here at Worcester Mansion uh, in Stonehouse in Gloucestershire. The house was started in the 1850s. It was being built by a gentleman called William Lee. Um, he moved down here with his family from Liverpool and they obviously discovered the valley and there was a big Georgian house that actually stood on the house before called Spring Park. They demolished that house and it took 23 years to build the mansion as we see it today. Um, that we believe there was another probably 10 to 15 years to finish the mansion um, and there are many stories as to why the house was never finished. My personal favourite is the fact that the, um, the builders either saw or experienced something supernatural and they all ran away from the building site and never came back. Although I've never experienced anything whilst being at the mansion in the five or six years that I've been here, I've heard many a story um, about the house and, you know, what lurks inside it. One of my favourites uh, was at Halloween, um, and we do the cellars up for the children. And one lady went to, up to one of my volunteers and said, oh, don't close the cellars, there's a little girl down there. She's in one of the corners of the rooms and she's not very happy. So my volunteer, Sue, she went down there to investigate and discovered no little girl down in the cellar at all. Um, and so that was obviously one that's actually happened on an open day in broad daylight. Um, and our caretaker that lived here for 17 years had many stories to tell, but my favourite was one that his girlfriend used to tell us. Uh, she was laying in bed one night, um, they had a flat here, and uh, she said it was like a shadow it came in through the window and it moved across the ceiling. Um, and yes, she refused to move in after that. <laughs> But um, other than that, like I say, I've only ever really had second-hand stories from other people. But I get a lot of stories um, after we've had paranormal weekends where people send me images or audio recordings of things that they've picked up. If there was a particular area of the mansion uh, that I wouldn't want to be left alone in in the dark, it would definitely be the cellar. Join us as we investigate the Woodchester Mansion. What intrigues me the most about Woodchester Mansion as a paranormal location is the history of the site itself. What we need to understand is Woodchester Park dates all the way back to Roman times and during the time period leading up to Woodchester Mansion we've had a hunting lodge, a monastery and prior, uh, prior to Woodchester Mansion itself, on the very same footprint of land, we had a Georgian manor house from 1724 called Spring Park. That was owned by the very famous Sir Robert Ducey, the then Lord Mayor of London. So that brings us all the way up to 1845 when that building was sold and leaves us with the empty shell of Woodchester Mansion that we have today. In that time, the three main things that have stood out to me as unexplainable are uh, hearing a little girl shouting out of a locked off corridor at three o'clock in the morning, seeing a spirit or an apparition walking out of the bathroom area. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they will come up with. I managed to get six cameras operational in the, um, in the areas. Camera one, is our top floor, which we got, um, we're getting a lot of orbs on. Camera four is in the library, which is on the ground floor, which is uh, about 100 yards from us. Camera five is in the back room, which is supposed to have the poltergeist activity. Um, although we're getting bats flying on all these zones, this camera keeps moving. I haven't got any reason behind that yet. We're gonna have a look at that in case it's floorboards. Um, we won't put it down paranormal anyway. What's interesting to me about camera five is it has moved on three occasions where it's actually done a, a half circle um, when the girls have gone out of the building and come back in, when Don's come in the building. But there's a group just gone out, or oh, these girls have just gone out, and the camera did not move, um, which I was expecting it to do. So that is of actual interest to me. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll go and go down there, and I'll, I'm... I'll, I'm going to look for a loose floorboard, but I know for a fact there's no floorboards down there. It is concrete, so there's absolutely no reason 
for that camera to move. It's a locked off camera. It cannot, uh, it can't. As we continue the show with Tony, the schedule was soon to lay in tatters. I've come down into the cellar of Chester Mansion. Um, we've heard lots of stories about the place um, from previous groups. Um, it's definitely got quite a, a scary atmosphere. It's very dark, um, but quite damp, very really eerie feeling. Um, we haven't really, at the moment, heard anything. It's just not a very pleasant feeling down here. Just about to um, try the corridor, we could hear a few noises outside. Like, uh, it's not like walking, it's definitely so noise. So, we're going to have a little investigate and see what we can find. It began with faint voices and whispers. Then, from thin air, came this reply from a young boy giving his name as Rick. It, it feels like, yes, yeah, I'm standing next to me. Is anybody there? Work. Work. I can't see. Fucking hell. No. See, I am not going to see anything else. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What? I don't know if I used to go to the house. I need to go to the It should be on camera. It's on camera, but I'm running, Don. Um, we're in the, in the main um, cemetery, the and we kept hearing noises, sort of here and there. It felt more, there's like a tide and a breath. Right, you want to take some water? I'm all right, I'm used. Right, where was this? Right. Where was this? That was horrible. I tried to get them up to run, but you were... Down the steps. Right to the cellar. To the cellar. Right. There's a panel, and we asked if there's anybody there. At this point, I could feel a presence and took a recording. It got loud. Whatever it was, I mean, it knew we were frightened, it got louder, didn't it? I think what we're going to do now, guys, is Don, can you go down there okay. on your own and, and, see, what's oh, and see what's down there? Mm. No, but it, with all due okay. respect, okay. personally, I think obviously Don, with the worst, from, from what I've worked with him before, he's the only person that I would, would, would trust at the moment to go down on his own. I'll take the camera. Take the camera and do a little video diary. It, it's here now though, because it's so strong there. Now listen, yeah, we we'll listen, right, we've got some skeptics. Well, let's just, just, just while the cameras are rolling, Dean, what do you make of that? The, this is the Dean, the, the, the chap who's uh, filming right now. What, 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 can you hear that voice, Dean? I can hear something there, yeah, definitely. Oh, There's a voice behind you. Yeah, yeah. We sat there for quite a while, it was a few noises, a few knocks. We went back upstairs, um, screaming quite a bit. Um, we got back in the room, both very shaken. We were physically shaken, felt sick. Um, we were slightly teary as well, but um, Don asked out. He said he felt something was in the room with us. He asked out, and on the recording, he's, he's got forever, forever evil. And I'm not a particularly jumpy person, but it was not nice. Having heard Rachel's description, I was keen to get down to the cellar to see if I could make contact with any entity. As I asked for a name, a reply came back which sounded like Jack. Well, I think what we'll do 
I don't think they are here. You ready for this demo? Yeah, let's just try and do it now. Yes. Almost instantly, Nick and Damo heard a breath on the stairs, followed by this voice, which came from the air. What? Oh. Is there anything behind these boards? If there's anyone else down here and you don't want us to be here, can you do something? Can you can you shout something at us? Throw something at us to let us know to leave this cellar? Let's compare that sound to the sound I captured only moments before in a different part of the cellar, which seemed to be in response to the question. Fuck. Who was it that scared the girls? Fuck. Who was it that scared the girls? Jesus Christ, yeah, it is, it is, mate. It's gotta be. I'm gonna look for a loose floorboard, but I know for a fact there's no floorboards down there. It is concrete. Sure. I would see I'm not I'm right today. We go to the night time you're in a cellar. Do you know what I'm gonna do that when we turn this off? Do you, know, do you know what does mean? It's the fact that we've got no mobile signal. So that's when you said Yeah, I can't see where I'm going. I want to. You feel alright? Yeah. As I made my way to the mortuary, Rachel and co made their way to the bathroom of the mansion and heard this voice. The recorded capture of this disembodied voice that replies, you will wait to... Anybody there? What's this doing? What's 
four of us have gone into the bathroom. Um, we've all took in here, and the first thing we heard was, um, well, we both we both heard, didn't we? Yeah. Um, like a, a, a low whisper. There's nothing in there at all. And it was so loud and so clear that I actually thought someone was messing around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to probably sit in here, uh, ask out a little bit, and um, see if we can pick anything up. If you can make a noise or a light. After making their way from the bathroom to the corridor, only moments later, our camera picked up another disembodied voice, a male spirit that appears to say, wait. Moments later, this was captured on the voice recorder. We're actually going to go down to the cellar. We returned to the cellar. Rachel described what she had experienced. It matched the experiences of Nick and Damo exactly. Was it just here when you had? Yeah. What was it exactly happened? Um, we came out to the corridor, me and Marie, and we just started walking along here. We heard, like a, it wasn't a shuffle, it was a strange noise, wasn't it? And we got about here, and there was a horrible sort of. behind that. Is there anything behind these boards? Another one, but twice as loud. And it came from here, behind here. I'm not really scared, because you know what, I have... I don't found any way to be able to fly in here yet. You just said something interesting. Oh. I used to have a camera when he came down on his own, and he said, tell, tell Don what you just told us, because for me, Felt the same thing as you just told us yeah. earlier. Well, I just came down, been down three times. Yeah. First day I came down, okay, there was a chill. Second day I came down, I had like electricity all over me. And then as I went out of the place, I went back up the stairs and I had the fear to run. At that point, I turned around, walked back down the walls, and said, I ain't interested, mate. And I walked back out, I said, I'll be back because I've got to set my camera up. But both cameras, both ca units have failed. No video input, hard drive failures. So I've had to ditch them. And the camera there is wiring directly. Okay. So. Uh, well, I, well, before we came, I'm sure the batteries were fully charged, obviously. Yeah, well, they yeah. are. I took, took three out of the case. The first three were absolutely flat. <laughs> okay, let, let's crack on, guys. I'm all right, to be honest. You're okay? Mm-hmm. And Tony, you've already said what happened earlier when you came down. It's like a... Shh. Over there. Over there. It's oh. like a... Shh. Like that, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what we heard when we came out here. I said, oh, did you hear that noise? And she went, yeah. And as I said, well, let's go. We walked over to that door, that stairs, and that's where it all started. What was that? I got and thought, that's a fucking hell, something's behind me. I'm just saying that. Behind me, I thought it was my rage. No, I just heard that. It, it was here. I was there. It was here. Like, see how far back they were from you. No, right, they were there. It was that close. I, mean, I thought actually someone was standing next to me and doing it. But I also heard something from in there when I walked past. Okay. Yeah, it was very close to me. It, it was a very big, wasn't it? 
It was, it was big cool. because I thought I'd literally well, to start with. I felt something. I thought I heard something in there. Then I started filming you, and then I heard which I thought someone would walk along the side. I thought oh, Marie's joined me, and the next thing I heard <sighs> in the ear. Oh, oh, darling, babe, if she's that upset. Okay, unfortunately, Hayes just felt very overcome and very upset, and Rachel just, just took her upstairs, but we will c continue. This place has had all sorts of people, investigators, etc., literally fleeing here in fear for what supposed was in here. I've not actually witnessed anything myself in here. It doesn't feel particularly strong. But we'll call out and see who or what it's about. So is anybody in here willing to talk to me? So you know what, I, I can feel you with me now, but you're really, really strong whoever you are. So please do the courtesy and give me your name, please. Towards the end of the evening, I was in the cellar and I could feel a male presence. I asked his name and he responded. It sounds like it could be. When I asked his name, he replied, I am Michael. It's been a really good night. Um, plenty of recordings, um, lots of evidence to go through when we get back. So, um, yeah, it's been a really good night. How has it been? Well, for me personally, seeing how Don works, it's certainly been educational. Now, one particular thing that stood out to me was a voice that Don caught on his digital recorder. Forever evil. And that certainly made me feel uneasy. We've come to the end of the investigation at Worcester Mansion. It's been an absolutely fantastic night. Um, I know Rachel had a pretty heavy experience. That was made even better for me with the voice uh, about the evil and everything. Um, we've had lots of voices, lots of activity. I'm really looking forward to going through the evidence and it will be a place that we will return to in the future.